So, from what I can gather, looking at it, is if I slacken that screw, I can rotate that barrel. Because well, the problem I've got is to get that screw in line, which you'll never see in there, but it's there. And that's showing 24. So I'd have to. What am I showing on here? I'm showing 23 and a half. So I'd want to leave that on 24. Turn that, I can't, because if I turn that to 24, then this pin's going to be in the wrong place at the end. That's calibrated to that. This is just a, a readout as a slave. It's that that needs altering. I didn't want to take all this off again, that's all. I've had all this out. Um, it's not hard to get out, but... <sighs> what a to-do. I mean, I can lock that with that screw so that that can't turn. So if that's at 24, the screw's there, 23 and a half. So if I lock that at 23 and a half and then turn that till it's reading 23 and a half, I can't turn it, can I? It's the minute I, I can't turn that. Because the screw will disappear out the window. I won't be able to tighten it back up. Like a Chinese puzzle. I know for a fact if I take this front off and I can take that little rack out with the uh, digital readout on the counter I can get to that screw by revolving this, but of course then I won't know where it wanted to be. I've read instructions and it that is not clear. I don't even know if I can get a screwdriver in there without modifying one. Certainly won't get in with that because that's what I used originally to undo it when it was down on there with the front off. And I nipped it up. Sorry, no, I didn't nip it up because I had that one undone. Which is the biggest of them, so that one. Now that will go in there. Oh well, there goes shit or bust. Let's hope for success. Sure, which of these two is the biggest? My nerves are like what they used to be. I used to do ele right fine electrical components and soldering, but oh, bugging out. I played so much booze. <laughs> Okay, let's try. So, show me mucky fingernail. It's where I trapped that in a park gate yeah, when I was a kid and it never healed. Right, let's go to zero then. Yep, so we come back to zero. No, I've got it wrong way. I need to go another hundred thou. Clockwise. There we go. I'm going to nip that. Right. Just so I can show that I'm not conning you. Jobs are good. Hey, hey. At least I've done some, some right. 
I've just about blown my milling machine up, haven't I? <laughs> Break to cutter, shove some metal. I mean, God, look at the. At least what first one I did. Look at the state of that. If you can make it out, but it's just got wheel marks everywhere. Basically, I polished it off. I, I polished about 40 thou off there. <laughs> and then that as well. Again, using an end mill, two flute. And Jason on model engineering for and put me right on that. Well, and that, not just Jason, a few others. And this is what I did yesterday. Um, I've cleaned that up simply. My, something my dad taught me when I was a kid is that is uh, 220 wet and dry, a new sheet. But my dad taught me how to do a figure of eight. When you use an oil stone and you're sharpening chisels, um, if you just go backwards and forwards, side to side or whatever, you put a rut in the oil stone and you wreck it. Um, you do figure of eight, you get a much better uh, finish on your chisel blade uh, and better control. You just get used to what angle you put your left hand on the top of it and hold the handle with your right hand if, if you're right handed. And you do the figure of eight. So I've done that on here because there were a few milling marks on it. Uh, and you know what, it didn't take that much to do. But that's pretty, pretty damn smooth now. Uh, that's the other face, that one very good at all, um, but it's come out lovely. So onward and upwards doing the tool holder. And I've now got a depth gauge that is working and like brand new again. God knows how many years old it is and how much it must have cost. And but it wasn't cheap. Is that somebody's name, What the, somebody's put that on or is that model number because I typed that model number in on Google and I didn't get anything. Um, and anyway, say a guy on um, Model Engineering Forum sent me a link and sure enough there are two page spread on uh, and in about five languages how to set these up, the digital bit with the vernier scale. Somebody corrected me and said it's not a vernier scale, it's a micrometer scale. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, it's not a micrometer scale. It's a vernier scale. A vernier scale is somewhat you have on a micrometer. I don't know whether you call that a micrometer. I suppose you do, micrometer, it's still a meter. But it's a vernier scale. And that's a digital readout. I'm always getting told off, you know, on the engineering forum. Right, so let's put this back. This little thing is a right little piece of plastic with two pips on it and goes in those holes. Push fit. Only because I've got camera on. It's been a cow bag. Ah. Done it. Great stuff. Right, we're all back together. All done. And we've got a, a depth gauge that works. Thank you for watching. Anybody that might.